Hey guys, it's Prav from PD Tech HD. Back in May, I did a video going over the Motorola Moto E smartphone, which also included an interview with James Soames, the marketing director of Motorola in the UK. I got a few comments asking for the uncut version, which is what this video is, but there are some bloopers at the end, and I've also included the full version of my hands-on. So you can watch this video in its entirety, and then watch the edited one, which will be linked towards the end of this video, or vice versa. Either way, on with the video. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Prior from PD Tech HD, and I'm here with James Holmes, the marketing director of Motorola. Hi, how are you? Not bad, thanks. So we're going to be talking about the new Motorola phone that we, uh, Motorola has announced today, the Moto E. So James, if you could start by telling us more about it. Absolutely. So with Moto E, we have, I, th I guess we've come one step closer to putting mobile internet into the hands of millions of people around the world. Um, Moto E launched today, priced at around $89.99 is going to once again change consumer perceptions as to what a, 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 an entry-level smartphone should stand for. The Moto E is here, it's packing the most vibrant display in its class, um, you've got dual core processing power giving you silky smooth user interface um, and the capability to access the best of Google um, as you would expect from um, a, an Android phone. Right out of the box it comes with uh, Android KitKat as well um, and also a gig of RAM. So what we're guaranteeing to consumers is that we will upgrade to the next major release of software and we've got a legacy of doing that faster than any other uh, smartphone manufacturer. So um, we're really excited about this device. We think the price is going to be really, really exciting to consumers and it's going to mean that value smartphone doesn't mean compromise. Okay, so just a couple of questions before rounding up. Um, so first of all, the Moto E, we've noticed that you've removed the uh, front-facing camera. So what was the reason behind this? Mm -hmm. So if you were to compare the Moto E to the Moto G, Moto G was priced at a level that we could pack as many features, critical features, into the device as possible without compromise. With Moto E, we wanted to deliver that same focused experience for consumers. Um, and what we didn't want to do was deliver anything that was suboptimal. So what we did was we talked to consumers out there as to what was the most what were the most important factors in their smartphone choice. And bear in mind that this the Moto E is largely focused at consumers who are upgrading from a feature phone to a smartphone. Yep. So they believe that build quality and design, processing speed, and, and you know a battery that lasts were going to be three of the most important things that they were going to be looking for. For consumers who are interested in front-facing cameras, for a relatively small incremental outlay, they could go for the Moto G. But uh, with Moto E, it's about you know making sure the experiences deliver the best bang for your buck. Um, in terms of battery technology, I'd actually been using the Moto G um, prior to this, so for quite a good few months, and the battery life was tremendous, yes. like, absolutely amazing. And even in the last um, time I spoke to Andrew Morley at the time, he said that Motorola is always key to battery um, technology. What is it about the software optimization that Motorola does that guarantees the battery? Because the capacity is not that high in some regard, which is a benefit in itself because it does uh, mean that you can charge the device a lot quicker. But what is it behind the software optimization that Motorola does to guarantee the best of that battery? Mm -hmm. So I think um, in terms of our software strategy, we want to always make sure we've got the consumer in mind. So what we've done is we've made sure that we have a pure Android experience, which means that you don't have a lot of power hungry apps that sit in the background that, let's face it, consumers don't really use. So it's a stripped down experience and that has masses of positive benefits in terms of battery life. Other things like Motorola Assist means that you can, you know, disable Wi-Fi, um, you know, not have any calls when you're in meetings, and all of those have positive benefits in terms of battery life extension. Okay. Um, and in terms of the, uh, f we, we noticed that you've got front-facing speakers on the Motorola E, so was this also uh, done by sort of a focus group consumer research, or where did you see the need for a front-facing speaker? So people like to, you know, to have calls hands-free. People also like to listen to music, um, so we feel that you know a speaker in the phone is is a must-have. 
All right, and just two more questions before rounding up. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, recently, well, quite a few months ago, Motorola was acquired by Lenovo yes. uh, before it was a Google company. So how have things changed at Motorola since the Lenovo acquisition? So nothing has changed because we're still two separate companies. The deal itself is likely to close within the next few months. We've had regulatory approval from some of the larger countries around the world, but uh, everything's on track. But in the meantime, we are two separate companies. Um, and what we do know is that Lenovo are highly supportive of our portfolio and our strategy, including the success that we've seen with Moto G, Moto E, and of course, Moto X as well. Um, so I think we look forward to building on the successes that we've experienced with our existing products. Okay. And the last question, um, 2014 is all about wearables. And a few months ago, Google did announce Android Wear, which is like a optimized version of Android just for wearable devices. And with that, they did sort of tease or sort of unveil the Moto 360. Do you have any information to share on that in terms of a UK release or anything? I have information, not that I can share. Today, it's all about the Moto G and the Moto E. Thanks very much for your time, James. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much. All right, so taking a look at the hardware of the Motorola Moto E, on first glance, you notice that the front-facing camera is no longer there. And Motorola said that this is because this, the UI is so simple that you essentially just turn the phone over, tap, and then you can take your selfie there. So you can see me there. Um, so the camera itself is 5 megapixels, so it's not the best, but for this price of £89, you really can't go wrong. And, you know, it's great for those quick snaps that you need to share on social media, for example. Um, also at the front, we notice front-facing speakers, which is a really nice welcome addition. Um, it's great for us music enthusiasts and gamers as well, so they're really going to enjoy the front-facing speakers. Obviously, uh, Motorola has done this mainly because they saw a need of um, people taking their calls hands-free, so obviously that helps with that as well. Um, just continuing around the hardware, on the left-hand side you don't have anything. On the bottom you've got a micro USB port, on the top you've got a headphone jack as well as another microphone. Um, and then you've got a volume rocker and the power button on the right-hand side. On the back you've got the camera and the Motorola embossed M logo as well. So the main thing here is the software. Um, so basically, it's continuing on from the Moto X and the Moto G um, in terms of bringing Motorola Assist, Motorola Migrate, and Motorola Cameras app um, to the Moto E as well. But something new is the Motorola Alert. So what Alert allows you to do is sort of keep in touch with your friends and family and let them know that you've arrived at a location or left a certain location as well, giving them the peace of mind um, for that as well. So that's Motorola Alert. It's also got an emergency mode as well. Um, carrying on with the software, this Motorola Moto E is running the latest version of Android, which is 4.4.2 KitKat, um, right out the box as well. And Motorola is guaranteed that it will get a latest um, update, next update to the major, to the next sorry, major release of Android, uh, whatever it's going to be called, 4.5 or 5.0, whatever it is, the major release. Um, the Moto E will definitely get it, and obviously it will get the incremental dot updates in the build up to that as well. Um, the other thing is with the battery life, Motorola is again continuing on and they're saying that this will give you pretty much all day battery life. Um, the capacity is 1,890, so we'll have to see how it fares um, if I do get a chance to test it and stuff. Uh, but overall, you know, in the short time I've used it, it's been really great. There's been no lag at all. It's just pure stock Android, um, apart from the Motorola things edition, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and overall, apart from that, the build quality, you know, it feels really solid in the hand. Um, Motorola has also got removable back as well, so similar to the Moto G, and you can actually add um, different shells to the to the Moto uh, E to customize it. You've also got a nice grip shell, which adds a lot more solidity to the device and allows you to hold it um, much more strongly and securely as well. Um, overall, though, just like holding it now without any sort of shell or anything, it still feels really solid in the hand, uh, much more solid than like my S3 or something. So really impressed so far. But um, yeah, that's been my quick impressions of the Motorola Moto E overall for £89, you know, it's a great buy, it's an absolute bargain. And for people coming from sort of a feature phone or a flip phone, definitely consider the Moto E, you know, for the price, it's just tremendous value. And I'm sure Motorola is going to live up to the great battery life um, that it touts as well. So uh, yeah, that's the Motorola Moto E. Earlier I had the chance to catch up with Mark. Oh yeah? Yep, yeah. so yeah, try and move it now. Try to move it now, yeah? Yep. Yeah. No, the other way. It's shaking too much, but... <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, just turn it nice and smooth. I think she needs any studs or something. Unless you're gonna do stuff on, nah. you're gonna do stuff animation as they call it. That's way too long. That's way too long. 
Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and if you made it this far, thank you. I hope it helped you to appreciate just how much work goes into editing when you look at the raw footage and then see the final edited product. Leave a like to help the channel grow and do share this video with people that may be interested. If any of you are considering picking up the Moto E and have any questions, drop them down below in the comment section. Do subscribe for more videos and I'll see you all next time.